afternoon, good afternoon. It's another beautiful day here Wednesday at the beach and we are live with recipe of the day and we are excited to be here. We have something yum and quick and easy on the docket for today. I am gonna make a fresh um, homemade tomato soup with some polenta, which I thought it looked yummy because I love polenta. And then we are gonna make a special surprise dessert um, in honor of tomorrow is National Cherries Jubilee Day. So we are gonna make Cherries Jubilee. So I'm excited to get started here. We're gonna start both of these at once. Um, let me get my tech up here so I can see your comments because I love your comments. Um, hey Lisa, how are you? Welcome. So I'm gonna get started. We are gonna start both of these, our tomato soup with polenta and our Cherries Jubilee, so that tomorrow you guys can make Cherries Jubilee, because tomorrow is actually Cherries Ju Jubilee Day. So I'm gonna start with two tablespoons of butter in both of the pans here. So I've got one going for the cherries and one going for my tomato soup. And in the tomato soup pan, I'm gonna put a little bit, a couple tablespoons of olive oil too. I got my pan hot. I'm gonna turn it back on there a little bit. How is everyone today? on this lovely, lovely Wednesday at the beach. I'm gonna get my butter and my olive oil. I'm putting in here um, almost a whole grated onion and let that start browning. I have a stalk of celery here chopped going in. And then I have a carrot chopped. I chopped it per, uh, pretty fine, mostly so it would cook fast for you guys. So that's going in. So that one is started. Get the heat turned up a little bit on that so I can do it fast for you guys. Um, let's see, hold on, my director wants me to move some, some things. Okay, so into my two tablespoons of butter for the Cherries Jubilee, I'm gonna put half a cup of brown sugar. So in this one, I even picked a white pan so you guys could see. Put the half a cup of sugar in there and let it get started doing its thing. Don't mix my spoons up since one is savory and one is sweet. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm going to let this work its way together here, the sugar and the butter. And let's see how our veggies are doing over here for our soup. We all need quick and easy recipes for lunch and dinner because we are all, those of us that are homeschooling too, have kids at home and it's a constant short order cook situation around here. Three meals a day. <laughs> so we're going to let our veggies get going there and I've got my sugar going there. And as soon as it gets uh, melted and dissolved, I'm going to put my cherries in. And then for the cherries, um, I have a bag here of just organic frozen cherries. And uh, I'm going to put the bag of cherries in there in a second as soon as we get the butter and the sugar di dissolved, which it is. I don't want to get it too hot. Because I don't want to burn my sugar here in front of you guys. So I just want to get those incorporated. Oh my goodness. So this recipe actually called for light brown sugar, but I don't have any around here. I only use dark brown. So it's probably going to be a little bit darker color, but I don't mind. I love dark brown. So these are just pitted, frozen uh, cherries. I'm going to put these in here and let them get started. Looks delicious already. <laughs> I moved. Who moved my trash can? Who moved my cheese? <laughs> have you ever made tomato soup before? I'm not sure I ever have. So it's kind of fun. Hey Megan, how are you? We're making tomato soup and cherries jubilee. So I've got my veggies in here, the onion, the carrot, and the celery is cooking away in there. So we're going to let that keep cooking away. 
How are you, Megan? Is it cold there yet? There in East Coast. Oh my gosh, look at our cherries. Look how yummy those look. Yum! Frozen cherries, now you could pit your own. We're at the end of the, se of the season, but you know my trick on pitting cherries, you take a wine bottle and the cherry and put it on the top and take a straw and you can push the pits right through. Now, of course, you could use a cherry pitter if you have one, but makeshift cherry pitter is the wine bottle with a straw. <laughs> and you could pit cherries that way, too. So Chopstick works, too. Oh, chopstick works, too. Yes, we've tried that, too. So they both work. Hey, Deb, how are you? We are making tomato soup today with polenta and cherry jubilee, because tomorrow is National Cherry Jubilee Day. So I thought I would do that in honor of the holiday. So I've got our veg going here for the tomato soup. That's the onion. Ouch! That is hot. Ouch. Hold on. Uh, onion, the carrot, and the celery. And to that, I'm going to add our tomatoes. I have a can here of the San Marzano tomatoes. So I'm putting that in. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. And I'm going to put a little bit of our chicken stock in. I'm going to rinse the can just to get all that yummy tomato-ness in there. So I'm going to put one can in of our stock. And then, I don't know why recipes take things that don't come like in the measurements of the can. So I'm using two whole cans and I have a third can here just in case I feel like it needs it. So two cans. Of the chicken stock going in and I'm using just the low so, uh, sodium kind because it always has a lot of sodium and I can always add more salt but you can't take it out. Hey Susan how are you? Welcome. So we are making a quick and easy uh, tomato soup with polenta and then we are also going to make cherries ju jubilee. So they're both going here on the stove and the cherries um, I didn't have them out of the freezer for very long so they're a little bit frozen so they're wor uh, wor uh, working their way in now I'm going to use a couple tablespoons of tomato paste comes in a tube like this you also buy it in a can but I'm not going to use a whole can I'm only going to use a couple of tablespoons so these are great because you just squeeze them out and boom done so one Two. <laughs> Two tablespoons, very me measured very carefully. And then to this, um, there was no fresh thyme today in the store. So what do we do when there's not, you know, COVID cooking, we use what we have. I'm having to use dry thyme. But I would have used fresh if I could have found some, but there was none. Um, so I'm just going to take about a teaspoon of thyme because the recipe calls for two tablespoons of fresh. And so I'm going to put less if you're using dried. So I'm going to use about a teaspoon, put it in my hand, and crush it. I'm going to crush it. Any dried herbs that you use, you always want to crush them a little bit before you put them in so you release their flavor. So I'm going to crush those. The thyme, I put it in there. And give that a stir. Oh my gosh. It smells so good as soon as I... Um, uh, open that can of tomatoes. It was like, yum, smells delicious. So, move my things here. I have about, oh, three cloves of garlic that I crushed and I'm going to put in our soup. So, that's going in there. Yummy. And I'm just going to let that cook away there for a couple of uh, minutes till we bring it up to a boil. So, my cherries here. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Oh my gosh, look, it's turning my brown sh uh, sh sugar red. Can you see that? Oh my gosh, look how yummy those look. Yes. And simple. Talk about easy. Yummy, huh? <laughs> I know, well, we use a, what we've got. I saw, uh, 
something else today I had to use because I couldn't find. Oh, I didn't have any brandy to flambe these, uh, the, the cherries ju uh, jubilee. So for the two tablespoons of brandy that I needed, I didn't buy a whole bottle because I'll never use, use it again. So not sure we're going to get any flambe off what I'm going to use instead. So we're just going to keep letting our soup come up to a boil there. And then I'm going to use the immersion blender and blend it up so it gets um, nice and smooth. And then our tomato soup, we'll put the polenta in and let it cook. Be yummy! So that's what we're doing t today. So anybody know the history of Terry's Jubilee? I know me either. <laughs> I should have looked it up. Hey Deb, what's the history of Terry's Ju uh, Jubilee since you're probably sitting in front of your computer? <laughs> your quick draw. Yeah, hey, you gotta improvise with uh, what you've got and what you can find. So there's never a reason not to make a recipe. There's always a, substitu a substitution, so it makes it fun and creative when making new things and making recipes. There's always a way to make it good and yummy. Yes, there is. So, oh my gosh, I can smell those toma tomatoes. They smell delicious. Oh my gosh. I think one of my favorite things about um, tomato soup is that whenever we were sick as kids, uh, we have one of those little portable TVs, you know, like a little uh, color TV. Of course, it wasn't little then, but, you know, the screen was. And if you were sick and stayed home from school, you got the TV in your room, which was always, you know, a huge fun thing because we never got it. And then mom would make us tomato soup, of course, Campbell's, and a tuna melt and a chocolate shake. So that's what we always got when we were sick. So obviously one of my comfort food items is tomato soup, tuna melt, and a chocolate shake. <laughs> but I know directly where that came from in my childhood was um, that experience, because that's what we always got. So yummy, yummy, yummy. Oh my gosh. Oh, here we go. Thanks, Deb. So here's our history of Cherry's Jubilee. It was created by Augusta Escof... Es Cofier, probably French, the prominent, oh, prominent French chef and writer who is the first prominent chef to cook for the public rather than in private homes took restaurant fare to new heights. So he's the first guy to open a restaurant that wasn't just a private chef. And he invented Cherry's Jubilee. Thank you, Deb. And normally, if you've had this in a restaurant, they do it table side because it's so quick and easy, but then they flambe it and make it very dramatic which I won't be doing today. I don't know, do you think in the Quantro will flambe, director? I don't know, no? Probably not a high enough, I don't know what alcohol content we need, but I'm gonna use Quantro instead. Um, but it's only, let's see, 40% alcohol and 80 proof, so I, I don't think that'll, that's not enough to flambe, but it tastes good. So we're just gonna put a splash of that in there for, for flavor. Oh my gosh. Looks so good. So to that, I'm going to put a little bit of salt just to balance out our sugar. So a couple twists of salt in that. And then I have some fresh lemon juice I'm going to put in our cherries for a little bit of acid in there too. Oh my gosh, here's more. So in 1887, to celebrate Queen Victoria's 50th year as, mo as monarch, he created Cherry's Jubilee. So that's what he created it for. The queen's love of cherries was well known. And the chef adapted the old French method of preserving fruit in sugar and brandy to make a truly celebratory dish. How cool is that? So Cherry's Jubilee was to celebrate the 50th uh, year as monarch for the queen. So that's really cool. So I didn't know, know that and probably neither did you. Thanks, Deb. And so tomorrow is National Cherries Jubilee Day, so you can do this too, tomorrow. Okay, let's see how our soup is coming along here. Oh my gosh. There's just something about the, 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 the San Marzano tomatoes. It's just a type from Italy. There's just something special about, about, about them. They smell so good, they taste so good. And I mean, you could use whatever tomatoes you have, but there's just something special and a little 
more punch in those um, San Marzano tomatoes. So as soon as our carrots get a little bit smooth, I mean, excuse me, a little bit soft, then I will put our polenta in and see how they're doing here. And I cut them, I cut them very small so they would cook very fast for you guys. Oh, they're getting there. They are getting smooth. They're getting soft. So to this, I'm going to add our third of a cup of polenta. Now the recipe called for quick cooking polenta, but it's not what I had. I have regular, so just have to cook it a, a couple minutes longer. But the polenta will thicken it up a, li a little bit and give it just a little more, um, something a little more interesting uh, texture than if we just did the tomato soup without it. So that's one of the things that attracted me to this recipe was the polenta. Oh my gosh, and our cherries are cooking down here. And they're making a beautiful red sauce. Beautiful. Hey Mo, how are you? My son is on his way that direction, I believe, to see your son. Oh look, Mo, you're on. Mo, my friend Mo made me this. Can you guys see? It says GaryAndLisa.com. It's custom. And then on the back, it says Kiss the Cook. So follow Mo at Wood Designs by Mo. She has so many cute things. She has wine charms for your um, wine glasses. She has these really cool mason jars with custom lids. And I'm sure she can probably make whatever you want at, out of wood. So follow her at Wood Designs by Mo. But this is the cute one she made for me. And I think it's so awesome. GaryAndLisa.com. You know what happens there, our regular job, we sell real estate. So if you know anyone that needs to sell their home, we need inventory desperately. It's crazy out there. So if you know anyone, let us know because we're getting, you know, 15 offers kind of market out there and rates are down like two and a half for the buyers. So it is win-win on both sides. So let us know. We love to talk about real estate too. We can talk about real estate over food, see? Bring it all together. So, win-win. Okay, how's my soup? I hear my soup is boiling away here. Oh my goodness. It smells so delicious. And how easy was that? I mean, a few things, throw it in, saute, boom. I'm going to do the immersion blender and boom. We have homemade soup. How cool is that? Nothing wrong with Campbell's. I've eaten plenty of tomato soup Campbell's in my life, but not today. Today we're making it homemade for something new and different and easy. Oh, thanks, Deb. You're awesome. Deb just put our website there in the comments. For those of you that haven't visited our website, feel free. Oh my gosh, thanks, Deb. She also put most in, uh, in there. Wood Designs by Mo. So, Deb, you're hired. <laughs> My friend Deb is uh, a, a community manager and she uh, helps people with memberships grow their memberships with delighting their people. And look, she's delighting mine right now. How cool is that? Thank you, Deb. How awesome. And Mo says her Facebook is there too. Wood Designs by Mo. So the holidays are coming, and if you're looking for something new, I always am, trying to find something new and different, and you can have something custom. And I thought, I mean, I told Mo I wasn't going to use this spoon. It was going to be my art. I love it. But she was like, no, you have to use it. So I'm like, okay. Okay, so I'm going to turn down my cherries there while we finish this soup. I'm going to um, do the immersion blender, so hold on. I think I'm going to cover it because it's very hot. And... Move my kiss the cook here. Hold on, I think I'm getting out of the frame. Okay, so here we go. Immersion blender. Hang on to your hat. Now, if you don't have one of these, you could do this in a regular blender, but I would let it cool off a little bit if you're going to do that because it can splatter. So.
this if I was didn't have you guys wa uh, watching, but we we're trying to gonna do trying to do this gracefully with an audience. salty before I finish it here. So let me give it a taste. Oh my goodness. Delicious. Okay, I'm going to add a little salt and some pepper. I'm going to add a couple shakes of red pepper flake just because I like it. Give it a little bit of kick. This would be a great thing that um, hot, the chili stuff I found at, Tr at Trader Joe's. Um, you get that out, I would sh show it. It's really spicy, but I'd probably use it to serve this with. I think this needs, I'm going to use my seasoned pepper, the one I love, and throw a little pepper in here. Oh my gosh, it's going to be good and easy and homemade soup, ready to go. As we are heading into soup season. Oh my gosh. And just because you really can't finish soup need to add a little cream. So I'm just going to add a third of a cup. This is actually half and half because it's what I had. So I'm going to put a little bit of half and half in here just to finish it and give it a little bit of cream. And then I'll show you how I'm going to serve this beautiful thing. And I'm going to put it in my bowl here. Oh look, I got tomato. I got soup all over my stove. <laughs> oh well. Anything for the show, right? Oh my gosh, this looks delicious. And how quick was that? Like 10 minutes and we've got soup. So in on to serve this, I'm going to take my grater, which I had here a second ago. Where would it go? Do you see the grater? Here it is. And I have some fresh um, Asiago. And I'm just going to take a couple strips of cheese to garnish this with. Now if I had some fresh basil, I would put a couple sprigs of basil on top of this, or if I had fresh thyme, if they had fresh thyme at the store, I would be garnishing this with fresh thyme on top. But there we go, a couple sprigs of cheese on top, um, Asiago or Parm or whatever you have, and that's what I had, and on top of our um, soup, and we're good to go. And then I will serve the Cherries Jubilee. Honey, you wanna get me my serving? My assistant will help me here. I have a dish all re re uh, ready to go to serve this. Now because I don't think my Cointreau is going to flambe, but I am going to put a little bit in just for flavor. Just a pinch. And the, the heat will burn off the alcohol. But if you want it to flambe, you need brandy and you could flambe, flambe that. So here's my ice cream. Look at that. Magic hands brought me ice cream all scooped. Isn't that incredible? The power of TV. Okay, so to that. Oh my gosh, this looks so yummy. I'm going to serve our Cherries Jubilee here. Oh my gosh, look what a pretty color that turned. Can you guys see how pretty that is? The red. Oh my gosh, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to serve this over ice cream. And I will have a little taste of this. And then we'll do our birthday shout outs. So, have a taste of that. Mmm. Delicious and easy. And in honor of Queen Elizabeth, assistant, would you like to taste that? There we go. So we have our ice cream and our tomato soup. And then I have several birthday shout outs today. So let me grab my hat here. Because we have a few birthday shout outs. So today, birthday shout outs to doo -doo -doo, we have Lisa Olson Roush, who is. Um, uh, friend, she's also she's a dive instru instructor. She used to fly all over the world, and she teaches um, dive instruction instructors. She's so cool and exciting that um, she used to live here, 
And then Vicki Mears, happy birthday to you, dear. She's a realtor in the Valley. And uh, happy birthday to you. Hope you're having a fun day today. And then Matt Fleming, my Italian countryside buddy. We went on an amazing Italian trip with his wife and my family um, and had just an incredible trip with Matt. Uh, and happy birthday to you, sir. How is Texas today? So hope you're having a good day for your birthday, Mr. Fleming. Um, and then Friday, we have a few on Friday too, so I wanted to get you guys. Wendy Warwar, happy birthday to you, dear friend. Miss you. When do I get to see you live? Soon, I hope. And Shannon Tyne, my friend from childhood, happy birthday to you, dear. And then Linda Ash, happy birthday to you. So hope you all have a great, great time on Friday on your birthday and do something fun and special. Um, and then today is Great American Pop Pie Day. And my advice on pot pie is, I could have made one today in honor of that and taught you guys, but the best pot pie is that chicken pot pie from Costco. Are you kidding me? It's like heaven. So I'm like, why would I make a pot pie when I can get the one at Costco that you take and make? Now make sure you have at least like eight people to feed it to because it's this monster thing, but it's delicious. So shout out to Costco chicken pot pie. It's the best. Um, and then tomorrow, like I said, is Cherry's Jubilee Day, which we just made. So you were prepped and ready to make that for tomorrow. And tomorrow is also Quesadilla Day. So I thought I could make a quesadilla today, but I was going to run out of time to go with our tomato soup. You'd usually serve a grilled cheese, but you can have a quesadilla with your tomato soup. Um, it's lobster day tomorrow, and I know lobster season's getting ready to open here. Uh, and then it is comic book day. So those are our days for tomorrow. So we thank you guys for watching. Um, you can always watch these videos after Gary gets them all cute and doctored with graphics. Mo, you definitely have to watch the one, I'll have to tell you which one, a couple episodes ago um, where he has a shout out in there with your graphics on your, on your um, custom wood, uh, wood designs. So we appreciate you guys watching. Visit us at GaryandLisa.com. Watch these at Ventura Real Estate on YouTube. I will put the recipes here down below. I also put them on YouTube. Um, we're trying to get our subscribers to 1,000 on YouTube, so please visit us there, Ventura Real Estate. And remember, there's only two things you can control, your effort and your attitude. So always pick a good one and always do your best. And we look forward to seeing you here live Wednesdays and Saturdays at 3 o'clock. Thanks for watching.